Hello, in this video we're going to go over the Epsilon Delta criterion and its relation with uh, continuity and uniform continuity. In some textbooks they start defining a uh, continuous function using this Epsilon Delta criterion. Let's see what the Epsilon Delta criterion tells us. Um, so what the Epsilon Delta criterion tells us is that suppose you want to show a function gets closer and closer to f of x naught as x approaches x naught. The way we can do that is to say, let's say you want to, you are able to tolerate an error of epsilon here. In other words, you would like the distance between f of x and f of x zero to be less than some epsilon. So from f of x naught minus epsilon to f of x naught plus epsilon. The epsilon delta criterion tells us that that can be done. In other words, you can always find some delta, some small interval around x naught, that if the value of x is inside that interval, if the value of x is between x naught minus delta and x naught plus delta, then the functional values lie within epsilon of f of x naught. And as I said, some textbooks define a continuous function that way. They start with this definition, which is a very powerful definition. However, it's a little bit more complicated to work with, especially um, if you are dealing with the concept of continuity and the concept of limits for the first time. So let's look at the uh, formalization of this definition. Let f from d to r be a function and x not be a point in d. We say f satisfies the epsilon delta criterion at x not if the following holds. For every epsilon positive, there is a positive delta such that whenever x is in d and x minus x not uh, in, in absolute value is less than delta, then the distance between f of x and f of x naught is less than epsilon. In that case, we say f satisfies the epsilon delta criterion at the point x naught. Now, there is also another concept called epsilon delta cri criterion on, a, uh, on an entire domain. And the definition replaces the x and x naught with two arbitrary u and v. In other words, in the definition for continue for uh, epsilon delta criterion at a point x naught, x naught is fixed. But in the definition for epsilon delta, uh, delta criterion on an inter on, on a domain, ni neither of these two are fixed. U and V could vary. So we say F satisfies the epsilon delta criterion on D if the following holds. Um, for every epsilon, there is a delta such that whenever two points in the domain have distance less than delta, f of u minus f of v in, in absolute value is less than epsilon. So in other words, if you take two u and v that are close to each other in the domain, the functional values are going to be close as well. So you can make you can make the distance between f of u and f of v arbitrarily close because epsilon is arbitrary as long as you make the distance between u and v sufficiently small. Okay, so you kind of see that at this point the idea seems to be one of them is a local definition, the other one is more of a global definition. The main theorem that we're going to prove today is that a function is continuous at a point if and only if it satisfies the epsilon delta criterion. And a function is, uh, a function satisfies the epsilon delta criterion on the entire domain if and only if it is uniformly continuous. Okay, but before we get to that, let's look at um, a couple of examples. Here's the first example. 
using the definition and this refers to the definition of epsilon delta criterion prove that f from r to r given by f of x equals x squared satisfies the epsilon delta criterion at any real number but it does not satisfy the epsilon delta criterion on the entire domain okay so first things first let's just start with showing that it satisfies the epsilon delta criterion at any real number so let x not be that fixed real number and epsilon be some positive real number okay i need to show it satisfies f satisfies the epsilon delta criterion so i want to show there is some delta positive such that when x minus x naught is less than delta, the distance between x squared and x naught squared is less than epsilon. So this is what I need to show. So I need to come up with an example of delta that depends on epsilon and show that this statement of x minus x naught less than delta implies x squared minus x naught squared less than epsilon um, is uh, in fact valid note that delta could be in terms of epsilon and x naught but it cannot be in terms of x so x and uh, delta may not depend on x it could depend on epsilon or x naught or maybe both but it cannot depend on x the way we, we typically do that is we start from the right side from the uh, of the implication. Um, in this case, it is x not x squared minus x not squared, and we are going to um, uh, we're going to we're going to use the assumption of x next minus x not less than delta to find the relation between delta and epsilon. So this is absolute value of x plus x not times x minus x not which is less than or equal to x plus x naught times delta since x minus x naught is less than delta i can replace that by delta what i would like to do is i would like to make this one less than epsilon so this is what i'm looking for okay so now this is the part that i have to deal with um, so this is this is perfectly fine so the delta is perfectly fine this portion may go to infinity if you let if you allow x to be become become very large then x plus x naught could be very large it could go to infinity which could be which would be problematic so we um we can fix that one by making the, by by noticing that since x minus x naught is less than delta x would be around x naught so roughly speaking this is roughly like 2x naught absolute value of 2x naught um, of course it's not equal to it's like ap approximately that in order to fix this turn this approximation into something rigorous we need to use inequalities so we know x minus x naught is less than delta we are going to make sure delta is less than one or maybe even equal to one in order to be able to put an upper bound on um, on x so what we get is this we get absolute value of x is less than absolute value of x minus x naught plus absolute value of x naught by triangle inequality which is less than one this is less than one plus absolute value of x naught. so we're going to make sure that absolute value of x um, uh, minus x naught is less than one so notice that i need this so this is an assumption that i need to make and it is up to us to provide delta so we can limit delta as we wish so that's uh, one thing now we're going to take this and plug it into what we found up here so we're going to plug that in there so absolute value of x plus x naught is less than or equal to absolute value of x plus absolute value of x naught which is less than absolute value of x is less than one plus a absolute value of x naught so that would be one plus and then there's another absolute value of x naught, so we get 1 plus 2 absolute value of x naught. So, what I am going to eventually get is if I take this one and plug it into here, I will get 1 plus 2 absolute value of x naught times delta 
is less than epsilon and that means delta is less than epsilon over 1 plus 2 absolute value of x naught now let's see what we have we have delta is less than this quantity epsilon over 1 plus 2 absolute value of x naught and we also have that delta is less than or equal to 1. We need delta to be less than both of these. So think about what we need to do in order to find something that, of course, delta must also be positive. That is less than 1 and less than epsilon over 1 plus 2 x naught, 2 absolute value of x naught. So what we can do is we can make both of them smaller and take the minimum. So we're going to make, take the minimum of two things that make it less than or equal to 1 and less than epsilon over 1 plus 2x naught. Okay, so let's start with that. So let delta be minimum of, so I want delta to be at most 1, so I'll set it minimum of 1 and epsilon over 2 plus 2 absolute value of x naught. So note that Since epsilon 1, 2, and absolute value of x naught, um, uh, these are positive, and absolute value of x naught is greater than or equal to 0, delta is positive. Also, what we know is that delta is not exceeding 1, and delta is less than epsilon over 1 plus 2 absolute value of x naught. We know this. Now, Suppose x minus x naught is less than delta. If x minus x naught is less than delta, then we're going to get absolute value of x squared minus x naught squared, which is what we wanted to show that it is a small. That is equal to absolute value of x plus x naught times x minus x naught. And that's less than or equal to this guy is less than or equal to absolute value of x naught x plus absolute value of x naught times this guy is less than delta, which is less than. So I know absolute value of x is less than epsilon over uh, one plus two x absolute value of x naught. Um, oh, we don't know that yet. Okay. So let's start, um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and first limit x, yeah, I missed that one, then since delta is less than or equal to 1, absolute value of x minus x naught is less than 1, which means absolute value of x, which is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus x naught plus absolute value of x naught is less than 1 plus absolute value of x naught. Now, we're going to get to what we want. So this is less than 1 plus absolute value of x naught plus absolute value of x naught. Delta is less than epsilon over 1 plus 2 absolute value of x naught. And this product is epsilon. So that means the distance between x squared and x naught squared is less than epsilon. And therefore, the function that they gave us, f of x equals x squared, satisfies the epsilon delta criterion at x naught. And this is valid for every x naught. Okay, let's now look at uh, the next part of the example. The next part of the example is to show um, it does not satisfy, this function does not satisfy the epsilon delta criterion over the entire real line. Since we are trying to prove negatives, let's assume that it is, um, by contradiction, assume it does satisfy the epsilon delta cr criterion. So on the contrary, Assume f um, satisfies 
the epsilon delta criterion on the entire real line. So what that means is um, let's work on that on the right and then we'll turn it into a proof on the left. So for every epsilon positive there's a delta positive such that whenever u minus v is less than delta the distance between u squared and v squared is less than epsilon. Okay. So if u and v are close to each other, then u squared minus v squared are also close to each other. But that cannot be the case because if this is a small, you could make this one very large. So let's just say u minus v is delta over 2 and u plus v is 1 over 2 delta. Then the product becomes 1. So if you do that, the product becomes 1. Okay. So, but that requires us to take epsilon equals, so maybe I'll ch choose that as 2 over delta. Um, that, requi that requires us to choose de epsilon to be 1, so that we get a contradiction. From here, we can find u. u is going to be the average of the two. So it's 1 half 2 over delta plus delta over 2. And v would be the difference over 2. 2 over delta minus delta over 2. So we will go ahead and re rewrite that as a solution now. Let epsilon equal 1 in the epsilon delta criterion. So there is some delta positive such that if u minus v is less than delta, then u squared minus v squared is less than 1. So now, take these values of u. Let u equals 1 half 2 over delta plus delta over 2 and v equals 1 half 2 over delta minus delta over 2. Note that u minus v, the 1 half 2 over delta cancels and we get delta over 2. So that is less than delta. Thus, Uh, we must have absolute value of u squared minus v squared to be less than epsilon, which was 1. However, if you look at u squared minus v squared, this is u plus v times u minus v. Now, u plus v, you have to add these two, so you get 2 over delta, and u minus v we just saw u minus v is delta over 2, so that's just 1, which is not less than 1. So this is a contradiction. Therefore, the function f of x equals x squared is not, does not satisfy the epsilon delta criteria. So we assumed it satisfies the epsilon delta criterion and then we got a contradiction. Okay, so that was an example of a function that satisfies the epsilon delta criterion at every point but it does not satisfy the epsilon delta criterion at the, uh, on the, over the entire domain. Next example is, a, uh, is an example of a function that satisfies the epsilon delta criterion on the entire domain. So let's go over that. Using the definition, prove that f from 0, 1 to r given by f of x equals x over x plus 1 satisfies the epsilon delta criterion. So again, in order to show that it satisfies the epsilon delta criterion, we have to start from epsilon positive and then find some delta. So let 
epsilon b positive. So we're going to work on the uh, details of this on the right as usual, and then we're going to write it down on the left. So we start with u minus v being less than delta, and that should imply u over u plus 1 minus v over v plus 1 is less than epsilon. We start from the right side. We get u v, take the common denominator, minus u v minus v over u plus 1 times v plus 1. The numerator is going to be u minus v, and the denominator remains the same. And notice that u and v are between 0 and 1. Numerator is less than delta by assumption. I would like to make the denominator as small as possible in order to get something larger. The smallest possible value of u plus 1 is 1. And the smallest possible value of v plus 1 is also 1. So this is just delta. So if I take epsilon to be equal, if I take delta to be equal to epsilon, then I would be done. So if u minus v is less than epsilon and u and v are between 0 and 1, then what I would get is the distance between f of u and f of v is u over u plus 1 minus v over v plus 1, which is, if we take the common denominator, we get u minus v, u plus 1, v plus 1, which is less than. Numerator is less than delta. Denominator is, is uh, greater than 1, which, um, I'm sorry, less than epsilon, which is epsilon. Thus, F satisfies the epsilon delta criterion with delta being exactly the same as epsilon. So we showed, in fact, this function satisfies the epsilon delta criterion on the entire domain. Okay, so finally, so we looked at an example of a function that was, uh, that satisfied the epsilon delta criterion at a point, at every point, but not uh, over the entire domain. Now, and then we, we looked at an example of a function that satisfies the epsilon delta criterion on the entire domain. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about today is the uh, main theorem of the day, which is if you take a function, um, um, it satisfies the epsilon delta criterion if and only if it is continuous. Um, and it satisfies the epsilon delta criterion or on a domain if and only if it is uniformly continuous. Okay, so here is the uh, statement of the theorem. Let f from d to r be a function and x not be a point in d. Then f is continuous at x not if and only if f satisfies the epsilon delta criterion at x naught. And the second part is f is uniformly continuous if and only if it satisfies the epsilon delta criterion on the entire domain. Okay, so let's prove this theorem. We will prove the first part, and the second part has a similar proof. This statement is if and only if. In other words, I will have to prove two statements. One is that if f is continuous, then it satisfies the epsilon delta criterion. So the forward direction. So suppose f is continuous. And what I want to do is I want to show that there is some delta that, so let epsilon be positive. We need to show there is some delta. We need to show there is some delta positive such that if x is in D and x minus x naught is less than delta, then 
the distance between f of x and f of x naught is less than epsilon. So this is what I need to show. In order to be able to use the fact that the function f is continuous at x naught, I need a sequence because think about the definition of continuity. In the definition of continuity, you need a sequence of functions approaching x naught. Then you can deduce that the values of those, uh, the functional values of that function also approaches f of x naught. So that's what the definition was. So we are looking for a func a, a sequence approaching x naught. How do we find a sequence approaching x naught? So if you think about that, you could use proof by contradiction here and then create that sequence. So on the contrary, suppose no such delta exists. So see what happens if no such delta exists. Therefore, for every natural number n, letting delta equals 1n, we obtain that there is some so let's think about what the definition, what the uh, statement tells us. We have that there is some delta, so we have to negate that. That becomes for every delta that, whenever x is in x, uh, x is in the domain, if x minus x naught is less than delta, then absolute value of f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. So we need to uh, we need the negation would be there is something that x minus x naught is less than delta but so this is valid this is valid this is valid but this is not valid the conclusion is not valid the assumption is true but the conclusion is not true so there is some x since it depends on n absolute value of um, since it depends on n i will uh, denote it by x sub n absolute value of x naught minus x n minus x naught is less than 1 over n but absolute value of f of x n minus f of x naught is not less than or equal to n is greater than or equal to n now let's see what the issue is so by the comparison lemma limit of x n as n approaches infinity is x naught. So if you look at this star, x n must approach x naught because 1 over n approaches 0. Since f is continuous, limit of f of x n must be f of x naught as n approaches infinity. So f of x n must approach f of x naught. However, this violates double star because if you think about the double star, double star tells us the difference, the distance between f of x n and f of x naught is more than a positive number for all, uh, for all n. But by definition, that cannot happen. Definition of limit tells us if a, lim if a sequence approaches a number, then the difference between that sequence and that number must be less than epsilon after a point. Therefore, f satisfies the epsilon delta criteria. At x naught. Okay, so let's see what we prove. We started from a function that was continuous at a point and then we showed that the function must satisfy the epsilon delta criterion at that point. Now 
we will have to we will have to prove the converse of this so now assume if satisfies the epsilon delta criterion at x naught so let's see what we are trying to prove we would like to prove that um, so we would like to prove that f is continuous at x naught so let's see what the definition of continuity is the definition of continuity is if xn approaches x naught then f of xn approaches f of x naught so we need to prove so okay let's just start with assuming that suppose xn in d is a sequence conversion to x naught we need to prove f of xn converges to f of x naught so we would like to prove that f of xn converges to f of x naught so let's um, write down the uh, definition of convergence so what we need to show is that f of xn minus f of x naught is less than epsilon so let epsilon be positive we need to show the distance between f of xn and f of x naught is less than epsilon so how can we do that well we could use the assumption that it's f satisfies the epsilon delta criterion by assumption there is some delta positive such that if x is in d and the distance between x and x naught is less than delta then f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon we know that now we know the sequence f of uh, we know the sequence xn converges to x naught so what does that mean it means it would be less than delta after a point so therefore f of x n minus f of x naught would be less than epsilon after a point so since x n converges to x naught by definition of limit there is some natural number let's call it capital n such that for every n in n if n is at least n then the distance between x n and x naught is less than delta now by I'll, i will call that star by star f of x n minus f of x zero is in fact less than epsilon so to summarize this is what we proved to summarize for every n in n whenever n is greater than or equal to n then the distance between f of x n and f of x naught is less than epsilon but that is exactly saying f of x n converges to f of x naught by definition limit of f of x n is in fact f of x naught as n approaches infinity so this proves the first part of this theorem this proves uh, what we proved here was if f satisfies epsilon delta criterion then it is continuous and we also proved if f, f is continuous then it satisfies the epsilon delta criterion the second part part b is um, has a very similar proof so i will skip the proof of part b but the idea is quite similar so i will emphasize here that b uh, proof is similar but I won't go over the details of the
So this brings me to the end of this video. If you would like to continue with this um, subject, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video.